Hi, welcome to part three of our interview with investigative reporter Greg Palace, who's been covering Venezuela for a lot longer than anybody else. So please enjoy. Well, and I talk about fucking idiots. I was just at the New York Times. Yeah, let's they, talk they about those. They invited me in. I mean, I shouldn't By say it. Now they probably won't ever do that again. Thank but. God the New York Times sucks as bad as it does, because the last time I did a video about the New York Times, it got 1.4 million hits. Well, I got to tell you that I did because I don't like to talk behind people's backs. So I met with the New York Times people, and I've told one of their so-called investigative reporters, I said the, pro the difference between the way I've been reporting for BBC and Guardian on issues like, for example, vote suppression, is that we, invest we do long-term, deep investigation of the facts, whereas the New York Times is, it has a problem called lazy fuckism. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I explained this, and, and he says, well, not all Times reporters are lazy fucks. And I said... Well, I'll have to investigate that, too. <laughs> uh, but it's, so, it's not apparent on its surface. And, uh, <laughs> in fact, when I... It's a side story, but it kind of ex explains what's going on in Venezuela. I was down in Georgia, right? Right. And I uncovered... Then for Salon, uh, I uncovered a, a mass... I sued the uh, Secretary of State who was running for governor, running his own election, Brian Kemp, and I sued him for his... for the names of all the people who were purged from the voter rolls. I then hired four firms from Silicon Valley. It wasn't cheap. It wasn't easy. This is not lazy fuckism investigative. This is investigative, okay? And I hired four firms to go through name by name and go through records and determine that 340,134 Georgians were illegally removed from the voter rolls. That's what elected this schmuck Brian Kemp, okay? After Kemp was elected through this steal, the New York Times calls me up and says, can you send us all your files? <laughs> And I said, well, unlike your stories, all my files aren't, uh, isn't the five page Word document that I can send you. It's five file cabinets of stuff that's been built up. I was investigating Georgia for five years, my friends. And it's like, I can't, sorry, I can't hit a button, the send button, and give you all my files. Because they don't, they can't even imagine. And that's the problem is they don't go down. I went down to Venezuela again and again. I got the information and I got out of the Intercontinental Hotel in Caracas. I stopped talking to uh, white people who speak English and I went out into the countryside. And I got to tell you, uh, to give you an example of how people feel about the Chavista government, now it's Maduro who's taken over for Chavez. Right. And um, he was elected. Um, I went out into the countryside with uh, the leader of the opposition, one of the party, the major leaders, uh, um, Julio Borges, a great guy, actually, he went out in his Lexus and he's got his Armani mm -hmm. suit. You know, it's like he's so out of touch with what Venezuelans and we're, it was a very nice ride. We got to, and we're supposed to go to a rally in a distant town away from Caracas. And what do we get? We get um, uh, he, we show up and the rally is one woman. So we went to her house and had some arepas. It was very nice. One person. The next day. Chavez had a rally in that town, and I went to go see what the reaction. I said, well, let's see who shows up in this little town. 2,000 screaming people, Chavez, Chavez, because for a simple reason, as one white reporter from the opposition newspapers, by the way, most of the, by the way, in a dictatorship, it's very odd. The entire media, almost the entire media is completely against the government. Mm -hmm. In this dictatorship, we're, we're right? dictatorship, right? Yeah, the yeah. dictatorship, right? And so one of these reporters for one of the, for one of the biggest stations said to me, "Oh, uh, he gives them, he gives these people bricks and mortar and bread, you know, and and so they vote for him. It's like, oh, how dare he <laughs> <laughs> build, building houses and you know, <laughs> giving them food, you know? It's like, how dare he do that? And and that's the terrible dictatorship that is harming its people now." Am I, I? Just so you know, I know Maduro personally, but I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think he's he's the most highly qualified person to be president. I think that there's some good qualified people there. I think Maduro's made some terrible mistakes, um, but that's like, not the fact. It's not for me to vote. The correct. Pick your president. Barack Obama, say, George Bush, they all make terrible mistakes. Do we want somebody to fucking come in and invade us and appoint Net Louis Gohmert our president? Yeah, I mean, if they said, you know, look, oh, my God, you got a black president. We're going to have to find a white guy to replace right. him. Right. You know, it's like, huh? You know, and this is what's happening in Venezuela. But you're right. You got two things. You got the media is complete. I've never seen. And this was in 2002. You've I've never seen? About it. I've never seen bias of this. No, I think this is a magnitude. This is worse than WMDs. This is the worst. And so I no, did a, why? No, just me... so you know, I did an investigation for when I was with BBC and The Guardian. 
They put me on the Iraq investigation. We got the secret plans for the oil fields of Iraq, which was never reported in the United States of America. Oh, really? I did it on the top of the nightly news. But so why? But in you... terms of bias, I have to say, at least there were some some media and some Democrats. So you're saying like this? Who time are around. saying no? Phil Phil Donahue got fired from MSNBC. It was I... ubiquitous across the board <laughs> that people were pro Iraq yeah. invasion. The New York oh, yeah, Times, yeah. the Washington Post, told everybody they were crazy if they didn't think there was WMDs. Literally said you're crazy that right. if you don't think that there's WMDs. No, I, then... I'm, it's hard to say what's worse. So just put it this way: that was bad. That's why I'd say this is even worse if you can imagine because it's. Because my it, God, it's it's one thing even to, AOC to argue won't about, stand up against about it. Uh, about whether they're weapons of mass destruction. I know it was phony. It was bullshit. Remember BBC? We reported that they had sexed up the reports, and and uh, Tony Blair tried to try to control really BBC. BBC reported that. Re, BBC reported uh, the right stuff on in London. Not by when? the way. When? Just so you know, in two thousand uh, in two thousand three. Oh, really? Yeah. You're freaking kidding me. No. So why was the BBC doing that then, and now they are so horrible? You've had some real unfortunate changes, and but also I got to tell you something same thing else with about the Guardian. BBC. The same I, thing with the Guardian. I like got, they used to do such good work, and now they're so it's, they horrible. They pulled back from from reality a bit. And part of that, too, is you have to <laughs> – I have to say this about the people I work with. I, I love them. But, you know, but what's happened is, is also you have to understand that there's a difference between what BBC says to you in London uh -huh. and what BBC says to you out of BBC USA. Oh, really? And I've even had to take my own reports and edit them, in other words – pull them back a bit for the U.S. broadcasts. Because the BBC has been u ubiquitously lying about war. So they've been lying about Syria. They've been lying about Libya. They've been lying about Venezuela. So I'm very disappointed with Venezuela because, see, the see, cause it's something you can see with your own eyes. As you can see 100,000 opposition white people marching down the street. They cover that. But then there's 400,000 right. brown people that they don't cover that they don't cover. How can you know, it's like it's in front of you. It's not like it's like this is like you don't need Greg Pallas and his right. investigative reporter hat right. to figure this out. It's like you just look you down the street. This is what uh, you know. OK, I got to jump in here really quickly okay. uh, because, Greg, I want to I want to ask you because people have been wondering, why do you keep saying brown people like people are like affected by the use of brown people. But I get what you're saying. Well, do you it, think our country uh, or Countries that are being invaded are they typically uh, brown countries? Fair skin. They're not. Okay. We don't, well, we're not you want, okay, you want. Okay, I just want to tell you that people are. You, please do not impose American PC terms on the terms that are used by the Venezuelans themselves. Okay, Chavez called himself Negro e Indio, black and Indian. I know that that's not considered. If he said that in the U.S., we would say, "Oh, he's not very PC." But he is black and Indian. He was so is Maduro. Okay, so you, so let's be a little bit careful about imposing right. how we describe uh, how people of color here describe themselves. Let people there describe themselves as they prefer to be described. Okay, so but I do understand it. So so please, I I, I understand that some people this may sound when I'm using terms that Venezuelans use that I am using. Uh, terms that are uncomfortable a bit in the U.S. So let me translate from the Venezuelo into American. Yes, it would be um, people of color are the majority in Venezuela, and now they got some some blanco <laughs> to to, yeah, right. to say here's your here's your president because we know he's the president and that he's not a dictator even though he's never run for office. But it the it, here you also, like I say, you don't need to be a great investigative reporter or a lousy one to look down the street and see what's going on. You don't have to be a great – you know that the, that the Wall Street Journal – the New York Times had just read an article yesterday about, oh, uh, there's no food or medicine in Venezuela. Here's one of the big things, though. They don't – they say – and some people – this is a quote from the New York Times. I love this when they do this. Some people say – some really, people some, say who are some people? Some people say it's re the result of corruption some and people. incompetence of the Maduro government. Who are these some, some people. people? And what is their color, by the way? And and you know who are they working for? Some people say, and there was no zero mention of an embargo. There was no zero mention of the fact that, and we talked about Goldman Sachs, that the U.S. government, that is the Secretary of Treasury Steve Mnuchin, ordered the seizure of Venezuela's assets. 
and they're taking the money that was supposed to be paid to Venezuela for its oil, and they're dripping it back slowly to its creditor, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs. Mnuchin comes out of Goldman Sachs, so it is. So instead of feeding the people of Venezuela, it's feeding the uh, the Goldman Sachs yes. and their bonuses, and that's what's happening to the oil money of Venezuela. That's the con. That's the game. So it's not That's Maduro it's keeping the oil money from his people. It's actually Goldman Sachs, Trump, it's, Elliot Abrams. They make it sound like, like Maduro is like yeah. keeping it all in the basement I, of the presidential palace or, or that he's got big houses in Miami and stuff. He doesn't. When he came to New York, let me tell you, he had no money when he came to see me. He came in his mm -hmm. little, you know, he just, they didn't have nothing. They were staying at this cheap ass hotel. They had a tough time. And, 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 and I just got to tell you, it's. It's in front of your face. Why aren't they talking about the embargo? Why aren't they talking about why is the British government Why saying, do you think, Greg? Oh, I forgot. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Oil Be and money. So uh, I'll tell you exactly why. Because the people who report the news in the United States are owned and funded by the people they're supposed to be investigating. That's the that's a problem. I don't care how high of an IQ Chris Hayes has at MSNBC. He's a bought and paid for corporatist mouthpiece, just like Noam Chomsky tells you in manufacturing consent. Chris Hayes is there to manufacture consent. And the minute Chris Hayes doesn't manufacture consent, they will fire his fucking ass like they fired Phil Donahue. And the reason why I keep pointing to Chris Hayes is because people think he has integrity and he's a smart because he's a nerd. It just goes to show you nerds also have no integrity when offered $30,000 a day. And and I'm sorry to say that about Chris Hayes. He does good work sometimes when he's allowed to, but he is a mouthpiece paid for by the military industrial complex and the oil companies. And so he will manufacture consent, just like Rachel Maddow, just like everyone knows Chris Matthews is a piece of it. Everyone knows that. That's not a secret. And anybody else, and you know, and now they gave Casey Hunt, who doesn't even know why we're sending troops to Syria. She didn't no idea. She she was angry at Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard had to school her. They gave Casey Hunt her own show on MSNBC. So again, what Greg, all the stuff he is saying, it, uh, you've seen Greg all over the news, right? You've seen him on CNN and MSNBC right, talking about this? No. Have they invited you on to talk about the this, Greg? Only, the only time I've ever gotten invited on to talk about Venezuela was on Fox News. So oh, they could isn't beat that me something? Up. Yeah. Beat, so they, so they can make you up. look like an idiot. Right. Or they could try. Or try. Right. Yeah, try. exactly. So, um, you know, like, oh, you know, you're a your Chavez stooge or whatever, you know. Yeah. It's like, Did you yeah. go? Um, yeah, of course I went. How'd it go? Um, fantastic. Nice. I, 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 I'm happy to to have a platform, even if it's Fox News. Well, you know what's funny on is because at least I can say something. The problem is the silence, and one of the yes, yes, the problem is the silence, and you know, again, you get, and this is okay. Venezuela is just the final and and like low point in media manipulation but it didn't just obviously as you point it didn't start with venezuela you know i'm well known in the u.s for those who know me watch a show because back in 2000 i uncovered that that george bush in and, florida and jeb bush and Catherine harris in florida removed tens of thousands of black people from the voter and rolls. that was in michael moore's movie about it that's right and what happened was in 2004 four years later the new york times editorialized about the infamous Felon purge, because what happened, they, they accused black people of being felons. Not one was. Felons who, who at that time couldn't vote in Florida. And they blocked them from voting. That elected George Bush as president. Never covered in the U.S. In 2004, the New York Times called it, rem, the, reminded us of the, of the infamous felon purge of 2000. How can it be infamous, New York Times, when you refused to report it? <laughs> I finally got the omerta at the New York Times broken by an African-American columnist who put it in his column, so it could be a news report, so opinion, you know, opinion that black people were removed from the voter rolls. and um, But it, it required a black columnist to at least whisper it out the door. But they would not cover the news of the black people being removed from the voter rolls. And if you think that that was the bad old days, I was just, like I said, no, I was just in Georgia they're doing it saying of where I had the information that that a third of a million people were illegally removed from the voter rolls. Stacey Abrams is screaming about it. There's not a one word about it. They keep saying, oh, she talks about vote. She talks about vote suppression. But they never tell you that's exactly what happened. That's how Brian Kemp got elected. They will never, ever say this is the Isn't son that, of a it, bitch who got why? who got voted in by Jim Crow tactics. Why won't they do that? 
Why won't they call that out? It's weird. It is weird. It it's is also weird. weird to see the Democrats not screaming about the repeal of the Voting Rights Act. I mean, they don't scream about any of this stuff. They don't scream about voting integrity. Debbie Wasserman Schultz has stolen her last two elections from Tim Canova. It's blatant. It's obvious to see. And no one's talking. No one. Not even Bernie. Bernie, they cheated him unbelievably in the primary. Won't talk about it. Why won't anybody talk it's, about it's election vi- fraud? But the you- Republicans will talk about voter fraud, which yeah, is not existent. <laughs> but election fraud is all over the place. I know. Well, Brian Kemp, when he was running his election for when he was running his own election to run for governor, kept talking. He was removing people on the grounds to prevent voter fraud. And yet they didn't arrest one single person. It's a it's a felony crime. He said millions. He removed hundreds of thousands of people to prevent this fraud. And not one of them was charged with a crime right. because their only crime was voting while black. That's and right. Voting while Asian and voting while Hispanic. And that's what it was. And you're right. It's not covered. And. You know, I ha- actually had a meeting, by the way, with Bernie Sanders and um, and uh, Reverend Jesse you Jackson. You had a meeting with Bernie Sanders? And Jesse Jackson. <laughs> and, 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 and you had a meeting. Well, go ahead. And the Reverend said to us. To and the Jesse Senator Jackson Sanders, said, we got we to gotta stop babies making babies. <laughs> I am somebody from the outhouse to the state house, from the state house to the White House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. Do, I can't do Jackson. Okay, but it's. Uh, um, but he's basically saying, if you want, you know, Senator, if you really want to talk to black people, you got to talk about the issue, and the issue is that we're not allowed to vote. Really, and he specifically wanted him to listen. He said, you listen to what Greg Palast is saying. Really, and take these things. And what I year will was say, this? What year was Bernie say? Bernie what? said, I will, and I hope he will bring up this issue. Um, whether he Hasn't you know, brought th- it don't up forget yet. that the media is so bad that if he does bring up the issue, I'm not sure it would be reported. Right, would probably. That's so you got to remember that. Right. He may they be try to use up- it against them. They they'd look yeah. for a soundbite to spin yeah. it the other way. You're That's right. what they would do. When did yeah. when did you have this meeting? I had it last year with him. So he 20, said if you're gonna, 2018. Yeah. So if you're going to run, you got to do this. You know, you have to take up these issues. And how did that meeting come about? Jesse Jackson set it up. Yeah, Jesse Jackson set okay. it up, and um, and he wanted Liz Warren to join us, but she ducked out. Interestingly, um, and. <laughs> Uh, but, I don't think she's a phony at all. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't think so. We don't know. I don't think she's a grandstanding phony. <laughs> okay, I'm not laughing. I'm a reporter. I can't laugh at your jokes. I'm not allowed to laugh at your jokes. Uh, I have to just, just the facts, ma'am. And, <laughs> oh, uh, you remind but, me of one of those dirty bankers <laughs> that I wag my finger at and never recommend prosecution for. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but all I'm saying is that. Is that yeah? It's hard to you can't get you can't get this issue out because it's like an attack on American. You're saying America doesn't have a democracy. No, we have a de- mockery of democracy. Yes, you know we have kind of an imitation of democracy. Yeah. It's not a bad imitation, but it's not it's right. not the real thing. You right. know, we it's have not rep- the real thing. Yes, we have a quite you know uh, we have an but, oligarchy. Yeah, I is what was we very actually concerned have, right. about you know when Bernie won California. Okay, I ran a. St- I, I, that's the other thing. I get attacked. I do get in the U.S. media. They don't completely ignore me. They once in a while mount attacks on. So it. Bernie wins. <laughs> Bernie. So, so they're doing in Venezuela. What happened? Like and, and and that's the problem is that Democrats have their hands dirty with votes suppression. I hate that word. That's why I can't get on National Petroleum Radio because I because I won't <laughs> use the I won't use the term. Vote suppression, like Ari Berman would. You know, he, he does, he, you know, everything's like soft. Yeah. And he says, vote suppression. Yeah. And I said, when your car's stolen, do you say your car's been suppressed? <laughs> you know, it's like, what are you talking about? What's this vote suppression stuff? <laughs> and then, you know, they won't use the term race. Like, I was investigating, Jesse Jackson wanted um, Bernie Sanders to take off, to go against this massive uh, purge program created by Chris Kobach of Kansas, right. you know, Mr. KKK, called Interstate Crosscheck. And he said, you know, Bernie, you got to take this one on. OK. And Bernie said, fine. But the, the problem was, is that, you know, um, you couldn't get that in the papers. So you'd have like guys like Berman say, oh, this is a vote suppression tactic. Who are they? Suppressing? Oh, it's inaccurate. And the Russians could hack the system. Ha. It's like the Russians. Wait, the it's Russians. not about the Russians, but they will not breathe. They will not. You know, a guy mm-hmm. like Berman is, will not breathe the the uh, C word, it's voters of color who are targets. And you cannot oh, really? say that because we now have we have Martin Luther King's birthday off. Mm-hmm. We had a, a half black president. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, you know, like, so shut the fuck up because mm-hmm. we don't have Jim Crow anymore. 
So we talk about voting rights. Right. We actually yeah. do. It's it's called the drug war. Yeah. Well, we we definitely have Jim Crow voting. Believe me, except it's now it's not Jim Crow anymore. It's Dr. James Crow cyber, an, you know, a computer analyst. So all they have to do is arrest a black person for a drug crime, and then they can't vote for the rest of their life. They're just in disenfranchised. Yeah. So that's why we're trying to get that overturned, too. Uh, but, but, you know, yeah, but the thing is, is I remember in California, I said— I, I got all the numbers. They did something that the um, that the Washington Post did not want to do, which is I actually got the numbers from the office of the Secretary of State, Alex Padilla, former uh, um, Hispanic, and um, you missed that. One. Uh, but uh, I got and, it. And who uh, was he? Was one of the campaign managers for Hillary Clinton while she's running against Bernie Sanders, and he's counting the votes or not counting. What they did was not there counting. were almost one million, about nine hundred thousand votes, which were disqualified. Nine, almost a million votes. I've never seen that much. I didn't see that in Alabama. There's probably not that many voters, but, you know, it's like Mm -hmm. literally almost a million votes were disqualified from, almost overwhelmingly from what were called NPP, no party preference voters. Ah. These were people who who were told wrongly that you could vote in the Democratic primary if you're independent. It's a whole complex process. Right. They were given provisional ballots. They were given the wrong types of ballots. They knew, and this was deliberate. Of course. This chaos was deliberate, and they got disqualified on technical means. We know that three out of four NPP voters, as they call them, these independent voters, were going to had voted for Sanders. So Sanders' victory in California primary was in this dumpster of 900,000 votes. In fact, in L.A., it almost literally went into a dumpster. 66,000 ballots <laughs> were going to be disqualified, and they were wow. in bins about to be literally thrown to the dumpsters. And I will say that in, this, in Los Angeles County, that when, when the county uh, um, clerk was challenged on it, they said, okay, we'll, we'll count those votes. Because uh, it's really up to each county. You can count those. I mean, because the Supreme Court at one time in its life did say you can, you know, what, you know, the voters in 10 count. Why am I off on these elections? Because if they do it in California, you think they give a fuck about who, what right. people really do and who people really want in Venezuela? Right. Okay. <laughs> if they're stealing your vote in Hollywood, they're yeah. going to fucking steal your vote in, in Venezuela. Venezuela. And, and they know that the, that the dark skinned Venezuelans, and I'm sorry if you don't like that term, but that's if the Negro e Indio of Venezuela don't want this white guy picked by Trump. Right. They don't give a fuck, and, and the media doesn't give a fuck because they've made the decision about who that president should be. And so you make the excuse, you just say Maduro's a dictator. It's odd. A dictator who allows opposition people to run around in the streets with guns, who allows them to have control of the media, who allows them to, in fact, conspire with foreign powers to invite in an invasion— but somehow no one, he's a dictator. But this is obvious to guys like you and me, Greg, but it, no one will say this on, on corporate TV. No one will say this on MSNBC or CNN or ABC or anywhere. Because the line is there. No one will. No one's allowed to say what. Again, it's again, it's just logic. Right. So the logic is that if he's a dictator, why does he allow Juan Guaido to have huge rallies in the middle of his uh, capital? Why would you not imprison that guy? Because that's what dictators do. It's because he's not a dictator. That's why. And right. he doesn't have to be because most of the people are going to vote for him. That's right. That's just the demographics of Venezuela. Right. Not, the only the, people the, more unpopular than Maduro in Venezuela is his opposition. Right. <laughs> and there's no question. He, he's, he's like, Maduro is not popular. He's like an unpopular president. This often happens. I mean, you know, but I mean, he's wor- Obama but- in 2010 was incredibly Unpopular in the United yes, States. Yes, you're but right. We didn't, but we didn't. Nobody say, wanted to overthrow. Oh, <laughs> yeah, why don't we invite the Canada to overthrow <laughs> Obama? Because his his popularity's dropped to thirty five percent. Right. Um. But yeah, like you say, Maduro is not popular, but he's more popular than, than his than, opposition than the fascists than the oil company uh, stooges that are being imposed on the nation. And that's a story that's not being told. And again, and then you have to look at oh, phonies like let me go north. Pierre, uh, not Pierre Trudeau, uh, Trude- uh, his son, Justin, Justin, uh, in Justin Pr- uh, Trudeau, Trudeau, who come, you know, he uh, the American press loved him because he talks all about how, unlike Trump, he's worried about global warming. Yeah. Except he's the number one salesman of no, tar sand no shit, no which is burning shit. up this, burning up the planet. Yep. And the reason he wants the government to overthrow, him, the reason why he's in love with the embargo. In against Venezuela, he's a big proponent of the embargo against Venezuela because he has the tar He's got the, the heavy oil yeah. that that is competing directly yeah. with the Venezuelan oil. That's right. And well, you know that's you know it's like does hello 
You know, it's not an e- well. But let me just make this point because I wanted to make it before you said you don't have to be a great in, uh, investigative reporter or a bad one. All you have to do is look down the street. That's exactly right. All you have to do is look at what's happening. We got Donald Trump wanting to invade a country that's got more oil reserves than Saudi Arabia. Do you really need more information than that? It's just. A, and, but apparently, people like Rachel Maddow and people like Jake Tapper and people like Wolf Blitzer and every asswipe at the New York Times and Washington Post, they all need more information somehow if i so this is what makes me angry is that uh if i know it i know they know it and they're just bullshit horrible liars and propagandists read manufacturing consent that's why those people you ever see the the movie broadcast news william hurt that's who they are they're chosen they're johnny bravo they fit the suit baby it's not because they're journalists they're going to tell you the truth or even inform you they don't give a fuck if you're informed rachel maddow's got the number one show in news and she's been misinforming people at an at a nuclear level for the last two and a half years it's not about informing you it's not it's about making money and right now you make more money uh for your overlords if you go along with a foreign invasion and that just shows you that they have zero integrity i a guy who uh in his garage a jagoff nightclub comedian c student can do journalism 10 times better than them and why because i'm not bought and I can tell you the truth, just like Greg says, all I have to do is look down the street. Hey, look, there's a half million people uh, d- uh, demonstrating in favor of Maduro. All I have to do is do that. All I have to do is look at Max Blumenfall's video from inside a, a supermarket inside Venezuela to know they're all full of shit. All I have to look is at, at Abby Martin's video to see a million people in the street for Maduro. That's all you have to do. They can do that just like me. Them pretending they don't know any better is bullshit. And so, and it's funny how they want to throw conspiracy theory around around to silence people who are telling the truth that the corporate media won't tell. And and 99% of the lefty media, too, fucking worthless on this topic, as they are worthless on Russiagate. They're just as shitty as the corporate news. It's like they all want to be corporate news. But guess who doesn't want to be corporate news? Me, because I made my bones in comedy. All the people I want to impress in my fucking life, I already did. They're in comedy, okay? These people in journalism, I have no respect for. <laughs> fucking zero. I don't want to impress David Corn or Rachel Maddow or some asshole at the fucking Washington Post. I'm going to expose them for being the piece of shit propagandists they fucking are. Suck when it comes to Israel, Syria, Venezuela, Russia Gate. It's fucking easy for a dumb motherfucker like me who smokes pot when he wakes up to do a 10 time better job than they're doing. It's fucking easy. And I want to say thank you for sucking so hard. My show's about to cross 500,000 subscribers. We're announcing our dates for 2019. We're going to Ventura Comedy Club, March 31st, Tempe, Arizona, Austin, Texas, Portland, Chicago, and lots more. Go to jimmydorkcomedy.com for a list of all our dates and live shows. And please become a patron. We give you hours of bonus material. And please make sure you're subscribed. Even if you think you're subscribed, they unsubscribe people every day, and you might be one of them. Check to make sure you're subscribed, and then you have to click the bell twice so they send you a notification when we drop a video. Thanks for your support.